everybody. Come on, who's excited to be in the house of the Lord today? Let's go. Y'all are because you ain't trying to sit outside in that smoke, huh? I know why. You're all like inside today. You're like, it's cool, it's cool. Like, we're going to get back outside pretty soon, pretty soon, I'm sure. But right now, when it looks like fog outside, we're just going to go ahead and uh, keep it real up on the inside. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. We got you. We got you covered. And so excited to see you in the house today. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Elliot. My wife Tiffany and I have the great privilege of pastoring this group of people called Lifeline Church. Come on, give it up one more time. Yes. Yes, our mission is, say it with me if you know it, is to be a lifeline. It's to be a lifeline by leading people into becoming lifelong followers of Jesus. I believe that whether you're watching online, so online, I see you. Don't worry. I I see you. I acknowledge you online, and I'm so glad that you're tuning in. It is so exciting that we can even have church like this at such a level, and you can interact and engage with us online. I think that's so special. Hallelujah. (laughs) Awesome, awesome, awesome. I I believe whether you're online, whether you're in person, or whether you're uh, sitting out on the lawn like a a trooper trying to do what's right, trying to do what you need to do, I believe no matter what, no matter where you're listening from, I don't care if you're listening a week from now on YouTube or something else, I believe that God has a message of hope, encouragement, and love that he wants to speak into your life today. And if you believe that with me, say amen. Amen, activates our faith, says, let it be done. And yes, Lord, speak a word into my life. It's not by accident that you're here. It's not by accident that you showed up today. It's not by accident that you're tuning in. So so tune in, so lean in, so receive what God has for you today because I believe he has something very special for you today. So from all of us here, welcome to Lifeline and welcome home. Who has Amazon Prime in the house? Anybody? Anybody got Amazon Prime? Anybody using that like way too much right now? Come on, it's like the only thing to do is like, I need, I need, I got an app for that, man. I'm gonna get me a new pair of shoes up in here. It's gonna be great. It's pretty easy to buy things on there. Is that true? It's pretty easy to buy things uh, on Amazon, maybe a little too easy. And what if I told you, continuing in this series on the Holy Spirit, that receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit was just that easy? Easier, easier. One click checkout, forget about all that. Man, we all got Amazon and we got no problem using that. But I'm, what I'm here to tell you today is that receiving the free gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift that Jesus promised his disciples, promised all of his followers from generation to generation is simply that easy to receive. Last week, we talked about his power in our lives. Who enjoyed that message last week? His power in our life, his daily power. That was, so, that was so strong. Like I was preaching to myself that whole day. It was crazy. Check it out on YouTube if you missed it. It's available for you there. And next week, we're going to be talking about some, some very practical Holy Spirit-filled practices we can do, it, like how the Holy Spirit intends to empower us in school, at work, in, in the business place. Like really in every area of our life, the Holy Spirit intends to make our lives more powerful. And, and uh, we're going to be talking about that next week as we conclude the series next week. But here's the thing. The, the topic of the Holy Spirit uh, confuses a lot of people. It really does. The, the topic of the Holy Spirit confuses a lot of people because it's been made confusing by people. <laughs> uh, that's just what I believe. Uh, opinion alert. Opinion alert. That's my opinion. I, I believe it's been made confusing by people when really receiving the Holy Spirit is one of the most simple things that we do in our expression of our faith. So simple. Now, you don't have to raise your hand. I'm asking you, like, you don't have to do this, but who here has a full and complete understanding of being a spirit-filled Christian in the 21st century? Full and complete understanding. Liar, liar, liar. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I would never do that to you. I would never call you a liar at church. I'm pretty sure I did. No, no, I'm just kidding. If you, if you had any kind of hesitation, any kind of reservation about what it means to be a spirit-filled believer in the 21st century, I believe you're being honest with me and you're being honest with yourself because this topic has potential to be confusing because it's been made confusing by people and because we have an enemy to our soul who's made it confusing as well. You see, the Holy Spirit has gotten overcomplicated by overzealous preachers. That's me. 
I, I'm a whole overzealous preacher if I've ever met one. It's me. It's me. Little overzealous preachers trying to prove their side, trying to prove sides. And therefore, the topic of the Holy Spirit and receiving his fullness has become written off by a large majority of the church in our nation and across the world. This is a universal concern of ours. This is very concerning. Because if we have been tricked in any way, if we have been misled in any way to somehow write off this part of our experience as Christians, as believers, to to somehow not have this fullness and not desire this fullness of the Holy Spirit in us, that is is a major concern, a major concern concern and that you and I face in this time. Now, I'm, I've been confused too. Now, this is not just y'all. I didn't like go to Bible college and then like, yep, I, I nailed it. No, this is something that I actually inherited this confusion because the first church that I ever went to was a recovery center church. And they, they were like, um, so it was like 80 of us in there, all of us guys. Um, somebody, somebody asked me uh, earlier in the service, uh, before the service started, do you have any women that come to this church? Because all the people on the serve team are all men. And I, my experience was all of us were guys. Every single one of those 80 men in that church, we, men in that church, we were all men, okay? And it was all of us and we were all crazy and we were all wild and we we're all trying to get it together. But the music would play and some of us would go like this and they would be like, mm, 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 get that down get that down. And we would try and express, that was too far. In that, in that setting, raising your hands and, and being all, you know, expressive. You know, some of you saw me on the front row earlier and being expressive and that was way too far. That was way too much. That was my, that was my experience in my very first church. I've only been to two churches, mind you. And so the next church I go to, um, you're basically not even saved unless you go up to the front in tears. Like, that's all there is to it. You ain't even feeling it. And you ain't even feeling this place unless you crying. Unless you crying, you must not be doing They like, be like, have their hands on you. They're like, come on, come on. And like trying to get, no, I'm just kidding. But it's, it's, it's funny though, how we can have two totally different extremes in churches that are kind of right next to each other, right? And, and you probably have experiences that I don't have. I've only been to two places and they, they basically found both sides of things. But it can be confusing. It can be like, well, what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to live a peaceful life and and blend in and and be a law-abiding citizen and just and do my duty and show am I supposed to do that? Or am I supposed to am I supposed to be zealous for God? Am I supposed to be uh, passionate and vibrant? Like, why do we have to choose? Then that was kind of what I came into. So I know, I know there's confusion surrounding this topic. The answer though. It's so simple, it's laughable. It's so simple, it's laughable. In fact, when I was preparing for this message, which is simply called Receiving the Holy Spirit, so if you take notes, you can call it part four, Receiving the Holy Spirit, and we've got notes in the YouVersion Bible app if you prefer to follow along that way. It's called Receiving the Holy Spirit, and when I was preparing for this, I thought to myself this whole week when I was getting ready, this is the simplest message I've ever gotten ready for. It's so easy. It's so simple, so basic. Because if you just have your Bible and you just kind of look through it, it's kind of straightforward. It's kind of simple. Because first, let me break it down. If, if it's not like leaping off the page at you, I'm, that's what I'm here to help. Number one, Jesus instructs us that we are to seek the gift of the Holy Spirit, just from the Father in Acts 1. Check this out. Once when he was eating with them, He commanded them, do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends the gift. Everyone say the gift. He promised. He promised us a gift. He promised us a gift. As I told you before, John baptized with water, but in a few days he will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. What's interesting, though, to me is that Jesus instructed us, don't go evangelize. Don't do an outreach. Don't go feed the hungry. Don't go serve the poor. Don't go do, don't go plant in churches. Don't go get a job. Don't go get, don't, you don't do anything until you receive this gift. Don't go anywhere. Don't do anything. You wait because this gift, it's like he was saying, you, you, you need to have this for the rest of your life. I'm, I'm going to give you something and I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give it to your sons. I'm going to give it to your daughters and I'm going to give it to the next generation. I'm going to give it, give it, give it, give it, give it. And I don't want you to even start I don't want you to even begin until you have this gift. Is that important for us to know? 
Yeah, it is important for us to know because the same is true today. He wants you to have this gift and it should be the very first, one of the very first things. I mean, these people had a relationship with Jesus. Okay, that's first, relationship with Jesus. If that's you, check. The very next thing, there's a gift for you. And it's the power of the Holy Spirit. John baptized with water, but soon you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. He doesn't want us to go out there and try to do life and try to do Christian life on our own. He wants us to be filled with the Spirit. Amen? Amen. Amen. Luke 11. Next, we have, all I have to do is ask and receive him. So it's pretty straightforward. Luke 11. Watch this. And so I tell you, keep on asking and you'll receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who seeks, finds. And to everyone who knocks, the door will be open. Is this message just about prayer, right? No, because it goes on to say this. You fathers, if your children ask for a fish, do you give them a snake instead? Or if they ask for an egg, do you give them a scorpion? Of course not. If you sinful people, just saying we are lower than God, yes. If you sinful people, you know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more should we seek this gift from the Father? And how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask for him? This passage is about receiving the Holy Spirit. What is it? Luke 11 Verses 9 through 13, that is a passage about receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit. Yes, it's about prayer, but he, he, he solidifies it when he says, when you ask for this gift, you will receive it. You will receive it. Simply ask and believe that you have received. If you ask for the Holy Spirit from your Father, he's going to give it to you. Wow, groundbreaking, right? This is not, this, this is so straightforward. We have no problem getting on Amazon and buying stuff we don't even need, feeding the wealth of the richest people in the whole world. But when it comes to receiving a free gift from our Heavenly Father, we hesitate. We hesitate. Why is that? Why is that? And finally, last thing is Paul teaches us that we need to continue to let God fill us on an ongoing basis. And I'll prove it to you in Ephesians 5. This is Paul writing. The Apostle Paul wrote this. So be careful how you live. Be careful how you live. Don't live like fools. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but instead, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Don't be drunk with wine. That will ruin your life. Instead, be filled. Everyone say, be filled with the Holy Spirit. That statement, be filled, is a continual statement. It means to continue to be filled. Now, some, somebody might think, just on first pass on this, oh, that just means, like, I just need to get filled one time, right? Well, no, because I need to, I need to, my car needs to be filled, but it needs to be filled more than one time. It's, it's repeatable. It's, it's a repeatable, and it's a command. He's saying, you, he's not saying, you know, you should try being filled with the Spirit. He said, no, you need to do this. It's, it's a command. Paul is being even more strong with this. In Greek, it, it's actually this be being. Be and continue to be. It's muth muth. My wife and I make fun of each other because we heard a teaching about it. It's muth muth. It's Greek word. It's muth muth. It's continue. Be being. Continue to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Like continual filling. In English, it can go both ways. Like I explained to you, I, be, filled, be filled with gas in your car. That can sound like kind of confused. Be filled with gas in your car. And it can mean one thing, but it all, it's also be filled. Because I filled up my gas tank last Tuesday, but to be filled means continue to be filled. And so this teaching today doesn't just apply to anybody who's never asked for the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's actually for every single man, woman, and child in earshot. Because we need to continue to be filled Maybe you have been filled. Maybe you have asked and received that gift, but you need to continue to be filled. Just like gas in your gas tank, you need to continue to be filled. Continue to be filled. That's exactly what this passage is saying. Be filled. Continue to be filled. Like someone said, like, yeah, 20 years ago, I went to, I went to uh, teen camp, and someone prayed for me, and I got all tingly. I'm set. Right? Like some of you laughing because that's like exactly what happened. But that's good, right? I'm full, right? I'm filled. But, that, but I filled up with gas last Tuesday. That does not mean my gas tank is full today. 
This is something we need to continue to pursue. I asked for God to fill me with his Holy Spirit before I walked out here today. You know what I'm saying? Like, we need to continue to do this on an ongoing and regular basis. God, fill me with your spirit. Fill me with your spirit. It's, and it's not that complicated. It's not that com- It's just, it's a simple request. Just simply ask. Ask the Father. Father, I, I, I want your spirit. I, I want to be filled with your spirit. It's very, very simple. I didn't give my life away to be a pastor to lead a bunch of people that are living on spiritual empty. My, my job, a part of my job, the lo- one of the largest parts of my job is to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. And if I, if I can't show you and if I can't tell you the importance of you just simply asking for the fullness of the Holy Spirit in your life, then, then you cannot be equipped in the way that God intended for you to be equipped. The days are gone when we just invite people to church and the pastor does everything. Like, those days are over. If we're not being the church outside today, no one's being the church. You need to understand something that we need to be equipped to do ministry today. And we cannot do this unless we are filled with God's presence and God's power in our life. And that means being filled with the Holy Spirit. Because we need his power. We need his, we need his insight. We need to be able to see the things he sees. And we can't see what he sees. We can't feel what he feels. We can't do what he needs us to do unless we are filled with his power. You see how important this is. I got one application. The whole, the whole message today has got one application. Can you believe it? You want to guess what it is? <laughs> you want to take a wild stab at what it might be? As you believe, ask and receive. As you believe, ask and receive. When you first believe, and as you continue to believe, when you struggle to believe, just as you believe, as you believe in Jesus as your Lord, as you believe, every time you think about believing, every time you consider the fact that you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, saved you from your sins and raised you back to life, as you believe, ask and receive for that gift of the Holy Spirit, just like the way Jesus told his first disciples to do. As you believe in me, but here shortly you're going to receive the power of the Holy Spirit. That's exactly what we need to be doing. Anytime you think about belief or faith or believing in God, ask for the Holy Spirit to fill you fresh and receive it in faith because he said he would not hold his Holy Spirit back. He wouldn't. He wouldn't. And I know some people struggle with that too. Well, I have, I have asked and I didn't receive or whatever. We're going to get to that in a second. But I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm promising you because his word promises, if you ask, you'll receive. If you ask, you receive. So really all you need to do today, if you walk away from this whole service and the only thing you got out of that was, I guess I need to ask God to fill me with his spirit. Nailed it. You nailed it. You got it. That's exactly what I'm asking you to do. It, see how simple See how simple this is? But this is a message about receiving the Holy Spirit, and it, it, it's not something I can do for you. I can't, I can't do this for you. It's like, it's like I got Adam right here, and I'm like, got my hands on his shoulders. I'm like, come on, Holy Spirit, let's go. You got to ask. You got to ask. This is something that you need to desire, something that you just need to simply ask for. You, may need, you might not even desire, but just to ask. Because being filled, being a spirit-filled believer might be a little different than you expected. Might be a little different than the picture that was painted to you. And I will get there in just a second. You know what it makes me think of, though? This, this, the simplicity of it. The ease of it. It's so easy. It does make me think of Amazon. It really does. It makes me think of Amazon Prime. The same day delivery. You know what I'm saying? The same day delivery. You got a drone flying now. Bzzz, did you want this? What the? the heck? What are you doing here? It's same day delivery, fast, easy, always in stock, one click checkout. Listen, I feel personally attacked by one click checkout. Am I the only one? Personally attacked. It should be a little bit tougher than one click for me to empty out my bank account. Can I get an amen on that? It's too easy. Jeff Bezos, you need to back up off of me. You need to back up off of my bank account because this is not legit right now. One click checkout? Who gave him the right? Do you understand what I'm saying? It's too easy. It's way too easy. There should be a three click minimum. 
Come on. Come on, let's start writing letters right now. There should be a three-click minimum because my bank account can't handle this. This is too much because I'm weak. <laughs> I'm weak to the Amazon. Man, it's, I'm so, it's hard. It's, it's like I'm, I'm waiting for the lawsuit. You know the lawsuit? You know, like the coffee was too hot lawsuit? I'm waiting for the it was too easy to spend all of my money lawsuit. Yeah, it's, it's coming. I just gave somebody up in here a get-rich-quick scheme. Don't do it. Don't do it. It's not worth it. But it's too easy. I'm waiting for that lawsuit to come where someone just had all this money and then lost it all. And all they have is like these brown Amazon packages piled to the ceiling (laughs) because it's just too easy. It's too easy. They have it on repeat order. You can click. Yeah, just keep on sending me that stuff. What do you call it? Subscription to whatever, man. They keep on sending you cans of whatever. You don't need it, but they just keep on sending it to you. They'll save you like 30 cents off your order if you just keep it coming. Now, you don't even have to order it over and over again. You just get it, and you're like, uh, where did I? I didn't even order this. It's messed up, which actually, you know what? I think I just came up with the newest invention for Amazon. No-click checkout. What do you think about? No- yeah, no-click checkout. Like, you're just scrolling and then you stop. Then you stop for a few seconds and it like a drone just comes down. Do you want this? Do you want this? No click checkout. I'm going to be a billionaire right there. It's like this. It's like I got my phone out and I'm just like, you know, I, I get bored just like anybody else. I'm on my phone and I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, hmm, scroll, scroll, scroll. Hey, those shoes look cool. Got. What was that? Scroll, 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 scroll. Wow, Alexa Home Hub? That sounds neat. What the the heck? I didn't say I wanted it. Scroll, 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 scroll. Wow, Amazon bundle package? What's that? Do you know they sell bundles now, right? Man, it's just box after box after box. No click checkout. All you have to do is stop scrolling long enough and they're going to send it to you. Ding dong. You just stop scrolling and your doorbell rings. It's not fair. It's not right. Mark my words. It's coming. It's coming. The day will come when you're looking at your phone, just thinking about ordering something and your doorbell is going to ring and, and they will have taken money out of your bank account. Like you just stop scrolling and you hear this little voice, checkout confirmed. No, no, I did not want to buy that. I was just thinking about it. It's not fair. What if I told you that receiving the Holy Spirit was that easy? It's, it's that easy. I'm not, I'm not scamming anybody. I'm not scheming anybody. I'm about to read you like 12 verses in a row that all say the exact same thing. It is that easy. Jeff Bezos ain't got nothing on how easy it is for a believer to receive the free gift of the Holy Spirit. Someone lied to you along the way. If you think it's complicated, if you think you've been waiting too long, if you think you got to do something special, you got to do something crazy, you don't have to beg, you don't have to fast, you don't have to take a sick day and pray all day, you don't have to pay for it, you just need to ask. And you don't need to be connected to the internet. You don't need to have your phone. All you... uh, All you have to do is ask. I'm imploring you. I'm imploring you, church. Just ask. Just ask for the gift. But is that biblical? Hold up a second, pastor. It sounds like you're kind of going out on a limb here. What do you mean just ask and receive? And you're just going to receive whatever you ask for in regards to the Holy Spirit. I don't know about that. Got you covered. Jeremiah 29. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find. What does it say? If you look, you will find. Deuteronomy 4. But from there you will search again for the Lord your God. And if you search for him with all your heart, you will find. If you search, you will find. It continues. Proverbs 8, 17. I love all those who love me. Those who search will surely find me. Matthew 21. You can pray for anything. (laughs) anything 
And if you have faith, you will receive it. John 15, but if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. What does it say? You may ask, it will be granted. James 1, 5, if you need wisdom, ask our generous God and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. Ask our generous God and he will give. 1 John 5, and we are confident that he hears us whenever we ask for anything that pleases him. Does it please him? to be filled with his spirit. Yes, it does. And since we know he hears us, we make our request. We also know that he will give what we ask for. Let's go back to Luke 11. It probably is my favorite one. Luke 11 says this, and so I tell you, keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open for you. Who's this for? For everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who seeks, finds, and to everyone who knocks, the door will be open. That's a great place to say amen right there. Everyone. Who is this for? Everyone. It's for you. Can I just narrow it down? I'm trying to look at every single person in here today. This, this is for you. It's for you and you. I can't, not every, it's, camera, it's for you. Everybody watching online, everyone in, but this is for Everyone. So if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he... He's a giver. God loves to give. He's not going to hold back from you. He's not going to hold this, his precious gift back from you. God is love, and love loves to give. He's a giver. He's going to give to you. Keep on asking. Keep on seeking. If you keep on seeking, keep on asking, then you're doing it right. Receiving the Holy Spirit is the very, it's probably the simplest part of our faith journey. But the enemy of our soul has tried to complicate and confuse matters. But that's dumb. <laughs> Let me just blow that out right now. Because let's just, let's just get to the facts. Somebody's, somebody's in here is thinking, well, what about tongues? Come on, let's quit beating around the bush. Isn't that the thing? Isn't that the thing that everybody's worried about? Oh, you think I didn't know. You think I didn't know you were thinking about that. Yeah, well, pastor, what about that? Hmm? What about all that tongues business? What about all that praying out in tongues? Man, I, I asked for that gift, and next thing you know, I'm going to be running around in circles like crazy. That's what we keep talking about, right? We keep on saying these like little things. Tiffany did it too. I did it too. Don't worry. Don't worry. And somebody's never been to church, never read the Bible. They're like, what am I supposed to be worried about? I know what y'all are thinking of. You're thinking about that, aren't you? You're thinking about that part, aren't you? I know you are. I know you are. Because I, I've thought about it too. I'm no different than anybody else. You might be thinking, what about tongues? I thought being filled with the Spirit means jumping out of my chair and speaking in tongues. I thought four out of five times the Holy Spirit baptism fell on people. It was accompanied with speaking in tongues in the Bible. It's true. That is, that is true. Look it up. It's true. Four, four out of five. Not every time, but most every time. What about that, Pastor? I don't know. I'm kind of putting myself on the line here, aren't I, for asking? I'm kind of putting myself out there. Listen to me. Listen to me right now. If praying in a heavenly language is a gift that you are looking for, you will receive that. You will. And it's a powerful tool. I, I pray in the Spirit too. I prayed in the Spirit before I came out here today. And I know I'm a little crazy, but am I that crazy? <laughs> Would you not take me to a family function? You know what? Don't answer that. Never mind. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Searching for a good explanation for that one, but. If you're seeking that gift, you'll receive it. Because I know a lot of people struggle with that. They, they pray and then they don't, they don't get it. Well, let me tell you a little story. I, I, I prayed to, to receive the Holy Spirit. And, and in some circles, unless you pray in tongues, you ain't got it. And you will be, better keep on waiting. And so somebody better surround you and they better shake you or they better do something like that. Let me just tell you, it doesn't work that way. The Holy Spirit is not something that is forced on you by another human being. If that were true, that wouldn't be a gift from God, would it? It'd be a gift from a highly anointed person. And that's not true. That's not true. You ask and you'll receive. And if that's something you're open to, but let me tell you, when I asked for that gift, there was a, de there was a delay there because there was fear. There was already a preconceived prejudice against that, that 
I didn't know. I, I couldn't trust myself. I couldn't trust that. And so I, I just didn't, I didn't do it. I didn't engage with that. But the funny thing is, is I heard it here, but it wouldn't come out here. Some of you know exactly what I'm talking about because you've heard it here. You've, you've, you've been through this. You've asked, for, you've asked for the gift and the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And then you heard something here, but you were like, nah, better not. Mm, better not. Is that me? Is that my flesh? Am I just trying to make stuff up? How did I know what you're thinking? Because I thought it too. I thought it too. And it wasn't until much, much later where I was, uh, I was actually playing on the drums. A lot of you don't know I'm a drummer. I am a drummer. And I was playing in San Francisco with a, with a praise team over there. And I was just playing the drums. And finally, it just, I was playing the drums. It was so loud. No one could hear anything. And I just barely praying, barely praying, just barely, just barely. But then I, I, I realized there was nothing to be afraid of. There was nothing to be afraid of. The, the fear that was planted there by you know who, it was not justified. It was not justified. But listen to me also on the other side of things. If tongues is a stumbling block for you, just don't worry about that right now. The, the, the disciples, they didn't know what was going to happen. But I'm, I'm here to tell you that you can expect certain things. But if that is a stumbling block for you, don't don't not ask for the gift of the Holy Spirit because tongues is not something you're into right now. Just, just put that aside. Don't throw away the whole gift because this corner of it bothers you. Because there's the whole rest of this gift, the insight, the wisdom, the peace, the serenity, the, the insight, the, the power, the provision, this whole gift. Don't throw the whole thing away because this much bothers you. Let him minister to you about that. If, if, if tongues is a stumbling block for you, don't not ask for the gift of the Spirit. He's, he's not going to throw you down on the ground. He's not going to throw you into a trance. I'm telling you, it is as simple as I've, been, as I've been saying. Just ask and receive for the gift of the Holy Spirit, and you will receive that gift and begin to walk in it. I'm filled with God's power. I'm filled with his presence. And you begin to have confidence and boldness. You begin to be able to, to, to speak to people that you used to be afraid to speak to. You used to be able to, you used to struggle with things. And the Holy Spirit is the one that fills you with power. That's why Jesus said, don't, don't go anywhere until you have this gift. If tongues is something you're seeking, you, you will receive. You will receive. And I don't have to hit you over the head with it. You just will. You just will. But if tongues is a stumbling block for you, don't let that stand in your way from receiving the rest of the gift. God can deal with you in a way that I can't. He can explain things and show you things that I just can't. He will, he will minister to you, which means he will serve you. He will comfort you. And he will work with you in what, you've, in what you're dealing with. Like I talked last week about how the devil's a liar, right? Who remembers that part? Man, I've been, I've been like steeped in that. Devil is a liar and I ugh, hate it. He's a liar. He lies to us. So, Here's the devil's misdirection. He gets people to focus heavily on one part, the most unexplainable, weirdest part of this gift, and the devil says, aw, you can't believe in all that. That's weird stuff. You, just, you know what? Just forget about all that. Those, them weirdos over there, don't do that. You just, you know, you stay steady. What's he doing? He's taking a little tiny thing, and he's, he's, he's lying and misdirecting you because if he can get you to reject the gift of the Holy Spirit, he can keep you compromised your entire walk with Jesus. Your entire walk with Jesus. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to help you become a spirit-filled believer, but I'm also trying to smash what you might think a spirit-filled believer looks like. Now, there's nothing spooky about it. There's power in it. There's power in it. There's, there's provision in it. He twisted and lied the devil. He twists and lies to make part of this gift seem unsightly and weird so that people won't even ask. So that whole churches just won't go there. See what he did there? He, he, he twisted it up so that we would stay away because if he can get you to not ask, you won't receive. But if you would just over, take this one step and just ask, you might find that receiving the fullness and power and presence of the Holy Spirit is much different 
than you thought or what you saw on TV or whatever. You might find that it's, it's something that you don't know how you live without before you had it. It's as simple as this, everybody. As you believe, ask and receive. Say it with me. As you believe, ask and receive. Just keep asking. Just keep asking. And don't worry. You, you will be okay. <laughs> you will be okay. You'll have better insight. You'll have more clarity. You'll have faster repentance time. You'll have more peace, better business instinct. Next week, we're going to talk about how the Holy Spirit works in every area of your life. Work, school, business, relationships. You will be benefited in literally every area of your life if you would just ask for this gift. I want to encourage you today. Ask for the gift. We'll pray in just a moment. And there's nothing going to be crazy happening. Not, don't, you don't need to worry about a thing. Just the same way we ask for the prayer of, of repentance and asking Jesus to come into our lives, it's the same kind of prayer. To ask the Holy Spirit to fill you and to fill you afresh. Why not try? Why not try? Taste and see that the Lord is good. Why not receive? Why not walk out the fullness God designed for us to walk in? that he told his disciples to wait for. Don't let old prejudice or fear of the unruly or unsightly turn you away from this gift of God. I, I feel like the Amazon delivery guy, you know? I feel like I'm, I'm standing at your door and I've got this free pack. I'm like, just take the gift. I showed up. Here's the gift. It's free. You don't have to pay a thing. I feel like an Amazon delivery guy that's, got the, that's getting the door closed on him. And I'm like, no, 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 no. You don't have to pay. You don't have to pay. And what's inside of here is better than you imagined. I feel, I feel so desperately about this. I feel so strongly about this. Because I feel like so many people have been lied to. So many, been peop so many people have been misdirected. So many people have been led away from the fullness of, of, of walking in, being filled with the Spirit. And like I said, like you, if you know me at all, know that I'm not, I'm a, I'm a little crazy. I'm just a little crazy. But, I'm, but you understand what I'm trying to say. Being filled with the Holy Spirit is not possibly what you've imagined it was. This gift is for everyone. This gift is for you. And my hope for you is as you believe in the Lord, you would ask and receive. Being a Spirit-filled believer is much better than you think. It's amazing. It's like a cheat code for life. <laughs> it's like cheat codes activated. It feels like invincibility, infinite coins, infinite health. Why? Because being a spirit-filled believer, you don't worry about things that the regular world does. You know that your health is in the hands of the Lord. You know that your finances are in the hands of the Lord. And when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you don't worry about things the way the rest of the world does because you know, my, my Lord has me He's because in, he's inside of me and he directs me. And if I lost this job, it must be because he wants me to have a different one. You know, and if I'm feeling ill today, it must be because he wants me to minister to someone in the hospital. It, it changes everything. It changes your entire outlook on life because you know God has you. To the point of death, you know God has you. It changes the boldness level that you walk in. Being a spirit-filled believer is far better than you think it is. Far better. And so for everyone here today, I, I, I'm just praying and hoping that you will ask and receive for this gift. And for everyone else, I pray that you would ask for a fresh filling because the world needs us now. The world needs us now. Not to play church. The world doesn't need us to play church any longer. The world doesn't need us to be us for and no more, all caught up in the church building any longer. The world needs the church to be, to be powerful, to be bold, to have insight. It's like we rise above the worry and stress the world seems to live with. We, it's like we live on a different wavelength. It's like we rise above the, the, the normal stresses of life because we have a knowledge and an insight that you can only have being filled with the Spirit. But it all starts with putting your faith in Jesus. It does start with that. Because there was people in the Bible, if you read the book of Acts, there were people that saw the power of the Holy Spirit in the lives of others and attempted to bypass Jesus to get the power. 
And uh, long story short, that didn't work out too good for them. It starts with putting your faith in Jesus. And then Jesus says, don't you move a muscle. I got a gift for you. And the very next thing I want you to do is be filled with this, to be filled with this power, to be filled with this insight, to be filled with this wisdom, to be filled with these gifts. I want you to have this. In the same way we, we believe in the Lord Jesus in faith and we're saved by faith, we also receive the gift of the Holy Spirit through faith. Not by trying harder, but by faith. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes together. It's time to pray. Father, I ask for open hearts today. And I just know that you're speaking to so many people, both in person and online. I, I know that you've directed people to this message today because this is something that they need to have. This is something you want us to have. Lord, we're so grateful, so grateful for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, we just reject any, any worldly notion, any lie from the enemy that's lied to us about who the Holy Spirit is or who he's for or that somehow the Holy Spirit died but the rest of the Trinity stayed alive. Lord, we just reject any kind of lie right there. And we, and we put our faith in, in your son, Jesus, In fact, this is a great place to put our faith in Jesus. So number one, maybe it's time for you to recommit your life to Jesus, where you know you're not as you should be with the Lord, that you used to be close with him, but you kind of drifted and you're, you know you're not where you should be. If that's you, in just a moment, we're gonna, we're gonna have a chance to fix that. And maybe you never knew that receiving Jesus was so simple that you just put your faith and simply give your life simply give our life. Now, if I'm describing any person and you want to give your life and submit your life to Jesus, I'd ask that you would just say amen online or lift your hand here in the house. Heads are down, eyes are closed. This is between you and the Lord. Say, I want to get back with the Lord. I want to get back with Jesus. I want to be back with him where I should be, as I should be. Amen. 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 I see you. I see you. Amen. So let's pray this prayer, but we're going to follow it up with another prayer. We're going to pray this prayer of salvation, and we're all invited to pray this, but I'm also afterwards, I'm going to pray that we would receive the gift, and this is all you. But first, let's pray for this salvation, and let's all say this together. Father God, I give you my life. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die on a cross for my sins. I give you everything here and now. My mistakes, my failures, as well as my strengths. It all belongs to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's wait right there for just a second. I know we normally celebrate right here. We celebrate for all those that gave their life to Jesus, and that is worth celebrating. But I want to continue this prayer. And if this is you today, and anybody who already feels like they have the fullness of the Holy Spirit, I would ask that you would pray this prayer as well. I don't want anyone to feel alone in this. I don't want anyone to feel isolated. There's no need for that. There's no need for any kind of spotlighting on anybody. This is between you and the Lord as well. But I would ask here in house and anyone online who would desire the gift and fullness of the Holy Spirit to just pray this very simple prayer with me. Go ahead and just repeat it after me. Father God, thank you for sending the gift of the Holy Spirit. I hereby ask and receive by faith the fullness of your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Come on, can we celebrate everyone who prayed that prayer today and stepped up in their faith? That is so incredible. Man, God's not dead. Am I right, everybody? God is good. He is so alive, and he is so active in this place today. And I'm asking that every single one of you that prayed that prayer today in faith, I, I, I'm just reminding you one last time, receive by faith. Don't let anybody or anything lie to you to say that, that somehow the Holy Spirit's being held back from you. Commit your life to Jesus 
Ask for the fullness of the Holy Spirit and you will receive Him. It's that simple. So don't let anyone lie to you about that. Before I let you go, i got a couple next steps. I, I know some of you are interested in taking some next steps here at the church. So I'd love for everyone to uh, grab a connection card out of the seat back. There should be one in front of you. Go ahead, everybody all at once. There's right in front of you, there should be a little pocket with some cards in it. Everybody doing that. Nobody feeling alone today. Everybody grab one. And if you just want to update your personal information, you can do that too. So that way everybody can take one out and fill one out because we got this connection card and online the links are in the description it's never been easier because we got some next steps for you um, and the first one is this is to sign up for one of our life groups like because we're better together everybody it's so important in this season of life in this season of the world it is more important than ever more important than ever for us to be together somehow some way find a way we've got groups for you we have groups that you can join right now, no matter if you're a lady, if you're a guy, if you're young, if you're old, doesn't matter. We've got groups for you. Go ahead and look into that. And if that's you on the connection card, just check that box and we'll follow up with you. Or if you're online, go ahead and follow that link and we'll take care of you. Tiffany talked about growth track earlier in the service that that's the way to join the team that that's the way to be on the dream team, as we call it, and, and explore church membership and what that means and what it means to be a part of the family. Let me just tell you, there's, there's many benefits to commitment. Commitment always builds character. And if you like this church, hey, you're in good company because we do too. <laughs> we like it here. And if you like it here, you know, to, to commit to something builds your character. And to say, you know what, for better or for worse, I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give myself to this relationship and say, I want to grow with these people. I want to grow alongside these people. Commitment builds character. That's why we have a growth track. That's why we have a dream team, so that you can experience the fullness of belonging to a family that is a local church. Um, one of the last things is giving. There's four ways to give. Um, they're up on the screen. They're, if you're online, they're just right below you. There's a link there too. But I know there's always a, a new person or two in the house, and so let me just run it down one more time. You can text any amount to that number, 84321, and you can text the amount there. You can also hit, there's a button on Facebook. You just hit that button. You can go on our website, or you can mail into our address, which is right there. Finally, last but not least, there might be a card next to you. Before I let you go, there's a reason why I put this part in the very last part of the service. It's because you're about to go out, and you're about to be deployed. And you're about to be the church in the community. You might be going out to lunch today. Let me just tell you, you are the church to these people. You are the church to the world. And so I want to equip you and I want to give you those invite cards and those acts of kindness cards, as we call them. The small business size ones are called acts of kindness. And I would encourage you, if your budget allows, put some 20s in your wallet. Maybe a 50, maybe a 100. If a fiver is all you got, Stick that in your wallet and reserve that, that part of your wallet to showing kindness to someone this week. If it's a fiver, even if all you got is five bucks, you can buy the coffee of the person behind you and leave that card that says, God loves you, and so do we. You have no idea what that might do for someone. I told you last week that I had the opportunity to walk right behind someone who just got yelled at and they were working the register. They just got screamed at. And I felt impressed by God to say, you know what? God loves you, so do we, and leave a, a little bit larger of a tip. And it came in right behind that person, probably the hardest part of their week. And I was able to do that. I encourage you, right now, this is so critical. Right now, this is so important because the world needs to see the church be the church. All right? So those are the acts of kindness cards. I want to ask you all to stand to your feet. I want to pray a blessing over you before we go. You get cursed at plenty. <laughs> all throughout your week, Monday through Friday, you driving down the freeway, man, somebody telling you you're number one. You know what I'm talking about? Well, when you come to church, you ought to leave with a blessing. So let me just pray a blessing over you. Let's all hold our hands out in front of us just like this. It's a posture of receiving. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you would bless these people. Bless the people of God today, Lord. I ask that you would fill them with your spirit, Lord, and that you would bless their relationships. Lord, bless their health. Bless their finances, Lord. I'm asking for supernatural blessings on your people today in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Come on, let's celebrate what God is doing. He's good. We love you. God bless you. And we will see you again next week. Love you, everybody.